I was raised in an activist family. So, uh, I mean, my youth was the uh, civil rights movement, the peace movement, the women's movement, the gay rights movement, and, and so on. So to me, stepping up to advocate for people with cancer who really need that, it, it was easy. And, you know, I had a positive, I, I was born with a positive attitude. My sister and brother and I have chatted about this a million times. We are just happy people. Wake up. We know we can do it today. You know, so that's all you have to do is today. <laughs> and that's what we do. And every single day I wake up and I'm raring to go. I might get worn out during the course of the day because there's so much to do. And, you know, but I don't let it get me down. I mean, I, it fires me up. And, and that's a good thing. And it's working. I mean, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't claim the ground that I've made a difference personally. I can't say that I have because how do you measure that? But I feel like the things that I've been talking about for over 20 years are really coming into play. And that's yeah. great. And I'm okay if everybody else did it and, I, and I'm just dragged along. But it's happening. Everybody with cancer, everybody should do complementary therapies when they're taking chemo or radiation. I can't say it more strongly than that. If you decide not to do chemo or radiation, there are alternatives. I know this for a fact because I use them and I survive. Anyone can survive. I am not special. I mean, this is the real message, you know. There's possibilities for everybody and we all live one day at a time and do the best you can that day. That's all you have to do. Absolutely. So uh, what sort of people speak at your conference and what sort of people come to the conference? So about a third of our audience are people with active cancer. A third might be support people, family, and advocates. They represent organizations because we want them to go back to their organizations and bring our messages. And a third are practitioners of all different kinds, including MDs, uh, but all, all kinds. And we offer continuing education for everybody but MDs because that's expensive. But the speakers, we have a combination. So this year we have an MD, um, two naturopaths, uh, an applied kinesiologist, chiropractor, a nurse who also practices Ayurveda. Um, we have a, a whole bunch. It's funny, you know, I'm not looking at the screen with it, so, so no. but there's, there's just a but, whole range. Some years we have a homeopath, some years we have, um, you know, just whatever is happening. We have had researchers, every year we have some, at least one researcher talk about their work, and I can tell you that we are incredibly cutting edge because, as People may find out over time, research takes such a long time, and changing practice <laughs> takes a really long time, which is horrible. And um, but you know, we hear the new ideas. I mean, for example, we had a speaker maybe five or six years ago talking about dogs sniffing cancer. That's still being talked about as a real thing, and maybe coming to fruition now. We had it five or six years ago. You know, we heard about ketogenic diet a long time ago, and mm -hmm. last year we heard. You know, we just covered topics that are really interesting from a research perspective. And then our docs who were there, all the different kinds, talked about the protocols they use with their patients. So again, many paths to wellness, that's our theme all the time. And we show people by listening to these speakers, there's no single thing that you have to do. Look at all these different protocols. They're all here. They're possible. Choose amongst them or mix them up. I like mixing them up myself. And, you know, and go forward. And, and then we serve organic food at our meetings so that people really experience what it's like. Now local farmers have been donating produce and we juice. So on Friday and Saturday mornings, we have fresh squeezed juice for people when they come out of the first morning sessions. And, you know, fresh squeezed juice for anyone who's ever done it, it's delicious. It's wonderful. Completely invigorating and really gets your, you know, your system going. I recommend it, by the way. Fresh squeeze, organic only. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, so, so our conference, we have organic products that are donated and there are giveaway items and skin care and hair care things that people can use in their life to make it better. Do not use chemically laden products on your skin or your hair. Your skin absorbs, your scalp absorbs, your skin absorbs. It's a mistake. And nowadays, yeah. everything, if it says paraben, ditch it, any kind of paraben. I mean, it's really depressing. I look at, uh, I don't buy any conventional products, but when I'm in the store, I can look at the label. Actually, I hardly can bear it because of the smell. I can smell the, the chemicals through the plastic containers of these products. Disgusting. But really, we don't want it on our skin, we don't want it on our heads, we don't want to drink it, we don't want to eat it. I mean, this is a really big issue. And, and the world, you know, everyone's casual because, you know, like me, like the first time I had this thought, I thought, well, they wouldn't put anything dangerous on the shelf. I mean, they're not going to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, they are. And they do, and they have, and they still do, and it just keeps on going. So, you know, and the products that are cleaning the house, horrible, dangerous. They say indoor air is worse than outdoor air because you're trapped in an environment where you've just sprayed pledge, let's say, or you have something air freshener, or you've got Febreze, sue me, these are poison, these are poison, I don't mind naming them, you know, these are completely improper and, and wrong for human beings, totally wrong, I'm chemically sensitive, I know, 
and I can tell, you know, the other day I was at a meeting and this woman said, oh, I think I smell of gasoline. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> and they all said, oh, yeah, Anne would know. Because I know, I can smell things. I mean, I'm like a dog. I can smell from, you know, from really far away exactly what's going on in the world. And that is why I continue to avoid chemicals. My house is chemical free. It's fabulous. And you come to my house, you can breathe. You can breathe deeply and freely because it's safe. If I've made it that way over time when I realized all the things that I'm allergic to, and I still am to a degree. But again, you know, it's reduced by 60%. So I have almost a normal life. But I wouldn't love to be in an elevator with two women wearing fragrance and a guy wearing hair tonic. That's a definite, you know, really, or whatever they call it. Yeah, that would not be fun. And I would have a mask and I would put that on. So, so tell us whereabouts, whereabouts is your conference and how do people get to go if they want to? Thank you. So we hold the conference the end of winter, usually the last weekend in February or the first weekend in March in West Palm Beach, Florida. So people who hate winter can get a double bonus of coming to our amazing conference and being warm. Guarantee of about 75 degrees. Probably not swimming weather for us, but maybe if you're from the far north. <laughs> I mean, people come from like Minnesota in the U.S. where it's very cold. As I think the wind chill yesterday was minus 30, so I mean, come on, 75 sounds really good. But uh, our meeting is almost always, it's, it's always the end of winter in West Palm Beach, Florida. And on our website, annieappleseedproject.org, we have the ways that you can find out all the details, all the speakers, the titles of their talk, you can register. We have some exhibitors. We have a lot of giveaways. Um, we have continuing education credits. And uh, it's a very professionally run conference. And the reason I say that, not because I run it, but because I attend hundreds of conferences. I'm a veteran of maybe 300 conferences in the last 20 years, maybe more. Love, I'm a meeting junkie. I would go every week if I could. And I want my conference to be the best. I know what I like in a meeting. And our conference is that. The only thing we don't have yet is an online stream, which unfortunately the hotel that we host our conference in just doesn't have the capability, so I've been told. But we can Skype in the future now that I know how to do it, and we can do Google Hangout in the future. We're going to, just not next, not this year, but next year for sure. And next year is our 10th conference. We've had nine. We have eight in West Palm, I'm um, sorry, seven in West Palm and one in San Francisco. And this year, 2015, we'll probably have one in either New York or San Francisco in the spring. Um, early fall, because we may have some extra funds. It looks like we will. We, we are a member all-volunteer organization. We don't fundraise. So people want to donate to us. We love it. But 100% of any donation goes to our programs to gather and spread information. So we gather information at conferences, and a lot of our volunteers are trained by me. They go to our conferences. They get information. They ask penetrating questions, because we have to do that all the time. We always have to ask, what are the harms? Well, you know, we understand you spoke about the benefits, Doc. What are the harms? You know, what can we do to be well? Are you adding nutrition? Do you talk to your patients about? We always have to ask those questions, and and so um, that's what we do. And then other advocates are drawn to what we do, and they send their people to our website, annieappleseedproject.org, so that people can find the information to go forward in their own lives. And you know, nowadays more and more people are interested. The internet's available. It's not like it used to be. When I was diagnosed in '93, there was no internet really. You know, I mean, it wasn't an internet for the public. It was just for you know the medical community or, or scientific community. And then eventually, it became a real thing. And now you can find information. Our problem now is there's so much information. How do you sort it out? You know. So we, as an all volunteer group, we sell nothing. We don't make any money off of any products or services except our conference. The only thing that keeps us financially together, and that's you know, we don't charge a ton. Because don't forget, we're serving three organic meals at our conference. You know, we have uh, we don't pay our speakers; they are volunteering their time. Sometimes we help with hotels for the speakers, uh, airfare if they're not professionals or if they can't afford it, or something like that. But generally speaking, uh, all of the money goes toward our program. You know, my own family supports the offices in my home. That's where I am now. <laughs> the, my family supports our administrative costs, so to speak, which are very low because I'm the cheapest person in the world. I found every kind of you know, free or deal or, or inexpensive way to go forward, and that's what we do. Everything, the least amount of money spent, so that we can really focus on our programs of gathering and sharing information that people really need. And our Facebook page, I post every day just about, unless I'm traveling, and even then you can do some. You know, I post articles of interest and ideas and, and support for the basic premise that you have to get yourself well to get through cancer or heart disease or diabetes, and you can make a change. I mean, so we have this thing we call Three Steps for Health. And our program, one more fruit, one more vegetable every day. Anyone could do that. Taking a walk, you can do that. 
and then taking seven deep breaths before treatment or before bedtime or in a stressful situation. Anyone can do that. And the doctors like it because we're not saying take something. We're saying use your own self to get well. So it's, it's a win-win. And we were at a meeting in Nashville and a woman, very large woman, rolled up in a cart and she came up and she said, I found your program. I've lost 35 pounds. My medication's changing. Uh, you know, I feel like I can do it now. I can be healthy. Now, I'm not about weight. I don't care what people weigh. I care about what they put in their body because garbage in, garbage out. So, and, and you know who you are. You're eating, you're having a chocolate layer cake every night. You know, you're not doing the right thing for yourself. You're having chips. That's a deep fried food. We all pretend chips are okay. You know, you go to a meeting, oh my gosh, at a, at a health meeting and they give you a, a package of lunch. It's a boxed lunch at the meeting and it's a wrap or a sandwich or a salad, an apple, a cookie and chips. And I start screaming, what? This is not a health meeting. You can't have chips here. What do you mean you're serving soda? Holy moly. So that happens too. In fact, I was at a meeting of the European Federation of Nutrition Societies in Madrid several years ago. They let me in for free. That was their mistake. And I come in and the first thing I see is a giant Coca-Cola booth and it says above the entrance, hydrate. And I come in and I'm like, what? Coca-Cola at the European Nutrition? <laughs> nutrition and Coca-Cola don't belong in the same world, much less the same sentence. So then the meeting opens and the president of the federation speaks and he has an organic garden. He's French. And he's growing his own herbs and his own vegetables and blah, blah, blah. So I go up to him afterwards. I said, I don't understand. How did you get Coca-Cola as a sponsor? And he says, well, you know, they have the money. And there it is. Yeah. They have the money. Or when they serve sodas at meetings, people say to me, the planners say, well, well, people want, you know, they want soda. And I say, guess what? If there's no soda, they're going to want water or juice or tea or coffee. Wouldn't that be a lot better? Yes. So mm -hmm. I have managed, personally, this is my one success, I have managed to get soda off the menu in quite a lot of conferences. <laughs> I've also managed to get fruit for breakfast at quite a lot of meetings. I was at the National Institutes of Health in USA in Maryland, and uh, they didn't have any fruit for breakfast. They had donuts and bagels and, uh, you know, and I said, where's the fruit? And the woman said, oh, it's very expensive. <laughs> I said, you know what? Anytime you can't afford it, any apple seed project, we'll personally go to the supermarket and buy a bag of apples and bring them in because that's what we should be eating, not Danish, not pastry, not bagels, not cookies. It's kind of insane. So no chips. <laughs> you know who you are. No chips. No, no soda. That's the first thing. I make a shopping list. I never deviate. My list is no, you know, it's only real good food. Only. I read the labels. I never buy anything packaged except for beans. I buy canned beans, I have to say. Lazy. And pasta. But other than that, you know, really, if it has anything you don't understand what it is, you don't want to eat it. And it's even worse than that because everything's, I've seen people who actually interpret labels and you don't even know that half the things on the list that you don't know are actually sugar based and they're genetically modified forms of sugar. So that's a really big problem. Uh, but anyway, chips are out. They're deep fried. And soda. No matter how much, how many wonderful commercials of fabulous music and dancing and things, it's really bad for you. It's the worst thing you can do. You know, first thing out, great. Get rid of it. So how I really feel. <laughs> if people want to ask more questions or to contact you, they can do it through the Facebook page, which is also Annie, Annie Appleseed Project. Okay. Is that right? It's, yeah. Facebook is Annie Appleseed Project and Twitter is at Annie Appleseed. Um, anyone who emails from our website, we have a contact. Uh, you, it will email us directly. I try to respond pretty much the same day. If you don't hear from me in a few days, try again because something could go wrong. We do get a lot of email. But we try to respond. We try to give people information. We do not advise. You know, I'm not a doctor and nobody with us are doctors. We're all patient advocates. We're people who've studied and read and learned and been educated and taken courses and we know how to judge the information and that's really important because you know you want to do the best kind of things that would might work and not the things that have the least chance of working so we help you to guide you to that and uh, as much as we can that's brilliant thank you very much so is there anything else that you think people need to know or should they just come and find you at any Appleseed project well, I just tell one happy thing so let's say you're worried about heavy metal because all of us are exposed to so many possibilities and uh, like let's say you like fish and you're worried about mercury. Okay, dandelion leaves, parsley, or cilantro, juiced or eaten, can help your body to detox from heavy metals. That's mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, and maybe a couple of others, I forget. But all of them bind those herbs. 
dandelion, cilantro, and parsley. Bind to heavy metal and excrete them from your body quickly. That is a good thing to do pretty much every day. I juice today. I juice parsley in my juice. I had mint, which is also very helpful. All fruits and all vegetables help us. They're natural foods for our body. All herbs, all spices, good for us in one way or the other. Even if it hasn't been widely researched, whenever anything is looked at, we can clearly see it's meant to be eaten by us. And our ancestors knew what they were about, that is for sure. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Michael. If anyone would like to ask Anne any more questions or to get any help, you can contact her at annieappleseedproject.org or through Facebook at Annie Appleseed Project also. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much, Ath, and I'll Thank speak you. to you again soon. Wonderful. Thank you.